And I think if we bring up on screen now a comparison of this guy as a freeze frame and the other guy as a freeze frame, I think you, you can see that it's just completely different people. You know, like I said, the same guy with the same body shape, the same look, the same clothes in the same environment, basically doing the same thing. But because of my body language, I can be perceived in two completely different ways. One is a leader of society and an alpha male. And the other one is just some some tech nerd or some submissive man that just looks as though he's having a bad day. Okay guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why men should fight weekly, okay? And I, I don't mean going out on the street and having a street fight. I don't mean like being a dick, do you know what I mean? Getting in a bar fight or something stupid like that. I mean sparring or, you know, some pad work or something aggressive, something tough. And that's more the point of this video is just fighting is just like a high end version of that that is going to be the most extreme. And the main purpose of this video is that we are by far the softest generation that's ever existed, but we are more than anything an untested generation. Okay, which is probably the most, the most standout point here. I, I remember growing up. I was like 14 years old working on building sites, being yelled at, relentless amount of cuts and like you're hammering away and you smash your own fucking finger, it's pissing blood, you know you've got like a football match to go and play at like 12, it was like a Saturday or something you're working, you've been up since 5, you know just tough stuff like that and then I had to go to like Pizza Planet afterwards and do that shift till late. Um, you'd finish that, go into town, get drunk till like whatever AM, wake up. It's very, what I'm trying to say is that's not the toughest life, but it's very old school, like masculine man lifestyle. And I think, you know, stuff like being on a building site, you know, this is where I'm more headed towards here. I was just outlaying a lifestyle there, but like heading, you know, more, more like being on a building site, playing rugby, doing martial arts, sparring at least once per week, you know, things like this that keep you on your toes. Because previous generations, they all had a war. They all had struggles. You know, they had individual things that they had to get through on a daily basis. I mean, unless you live somewhere like Chicago, where, you know, the gun crime's just ridiculous, or you live somewhere where there's like, unless you live on like a gypsy caravan site, you're not going to be, you know, exposed to danger that often. Like where I live right now, it's so safe. Like I've got, I've got Starbucks down there. I've got some like charity shops. I've got some really like the markets on down there and they do some nice wood carvings and they sell candles. And I bought one the other day. I light it up in my lovely living room. It's so soft. It's so soft, right? Now, back in the day, like I said, I was on building sites, I was playing football, I was going out getting drunk, getting in fights and whatnot. I don't advocate that lifestyle and I would not like to return to that lifestyle. But what it does is it keeps you on your toes and it keeps you appreciating things, okay? Now, the position I'm in right now in my life is very privileged. I have a much better life, I have a much easier life. I'm, I was with my boxing coach the other day and I was just like, can we stop? He was like, yeah, sure, if you want to. And I was like, that's never been me before. Usually I would do it until like I was, I'm pushing myself to the edge. And I was like, can we stop? And he was like, yeah, why? And I was like, because I'm paying for this. I don't really want to be like, oh, I'm really struggling here. I was like, I want to just get good at boxing, like of a high level. I was like, I want to enjoy each session. Every other area of my life is tough at the moment with like business and stress and everything that I'm trying to push forward. I was like, I just want to enjoy it. Right, and that's the privileged position I'm in now. I can say, hey, let's stop. I just feel shattered. I'm just really out of breath. Let's stop, let's have a water break, let's get back to it, and then I can really enjoy it. If I was training for a fight, I would push myself, but I'm in that privileged position now where I can like step back, I can relax a little bit. When I get home at night, if I don't want to work that night, I don't have to. I used to have to do that because I didn't have any money. If I wake up in the morning, look, this never happens, but if I wake up in the morning and I want to stay in bed and I'm like, I don't feel like working today, it's raining, I feel like shit, I'm just going to jump in the bath, I'm going to do nothing all day, I, look, that's plausible, I can do it. That saying from Marvin Hagler back in the day, it's hard to get up and go for a run at 5am when you wake up in silk sheets. 
I would add to that, I would say it's not necessarily the silk sheets, it's who's in those silk sheets with you. You know, and scenarios like that, okay? So what I'm referring to is back in the day, you would have woken up, you know, in like rough sheets in an environment you didn't really want to be in. You knew you had work at 9 a.m., but you were also broke and you have to push yourself. Now imagine waking up in your perfect house in silk sheets with your perfect woman. Where's the motivation to go again? Where's the motivation to keep pushing? Now, I want to make a separate video on this, but I might not if this goes well. But people always talk about becoming a top 1% man. I'll tell you how to become a top 1% man. Anybody can have a good one year. Anybody can have a good two years. Can you have a good consistent five to 10 years? Right? The most handsome guy probably doesn't stay in on a Saturday night. That right there should tell you everything you need to know about life, okay? The the most handsome guy is probably not staying in on a Saturday night. You know, the guy who's got the best genetics naturally, he's six foot five, he's naturally quite good, like in good shape. Is he training as hard as somebody with shitty genetics in the gym? Probably not. That's what makes a top 1% man. Somebody who can wake up next to a beautiful 10 in silk sheets and goes, I've got to be up 6am, let's go, let's get back in the gym. How do you stay in that zone? Because I've lived this. I've lived both lives. So how do you stay in that zone? You've got to make yourself uncomfortable. Often. You've got to say, okay, let's do something tough. That's outside my comfort zone. Let's challenge myself. Let's sweat a little. Let's go for, you know, it's minus, it's minus two degrees outside. Let's go for a hill run. Let's go and do some hill running. You know, I'm fucking shivering. This is horrible. It's raining. It's, it's tough. I fucking hate it. I don't need to do it. The reason I'm doing it is to keep myself sharp. This is why men should fight weekly. This is why you should do sparring weekly. This is why every guy should go to the gym and do stuff like deadlift, squats, you know, stuff that stuff that makes your balls tingle a little bit, makes your heart skip a couple beats when you're a little bit nervous. You know, 200 kgs on this bar. Fuck me, this is going to hurt. That's good, okay? Because you come out of that gym with a sense of accomplishment. You know, you should box, you should get hit in the face a little bit. Because, because, you know, when you come out of there, you're going to be like, okay, you know, I feel a little bit better now. I feel as though I can take on life. But when you're, when you're constantly living that like rich kid, private school kid lifestyle, where things get easier, that's great. Okay, that's great. That's what we've all wanted. That's what we all wanted for our kids. That's what we've wanted all of our lives to have an easier life, you know, because it was tough for all of us growing up. That's probably why you're all here watching this. But once you've got it all, you have to stay on top of it. You have to stay on top of, you have to stay on your toes. Because I've seen so many guys rise to the top, get lazy and fall off. So this is one thing that I constantly practice. You know, I've often said, when I was really young, I was like, if I ever become rich, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the boys on holiday. I was like, but before I do that, we're all going to go to someone's garden that needs work being done. And we're just going to dig it. We're going to dig it by hand. You have to earn that fucking holiday. Now, I don't know in, you know, in hindsight, now that I'm older, if I'd ever do that. But, you know, something like that. I'd be like, guys, let's all go to the gym. Let's all spar each other. Let's do something tough before we go on this holiday. Because just always being privileged, always having an easy go of it. You know, being able to, me being able to spar with my coach, box with my coach and be like, hey, I just feel like taking a break. You know, that's not always good. I do it for enjoyment. I don't want every area of my life to be hard. There's, there's one reason why I don't take cold showers. Because I don't masturbate. I wasn't watching TV. I wasn't playing video games. I wasn't, you know, my life was just crazy. I'm talking like a few years ago. And it still is, but I'm talking a few years ago when I had this mindset. And somebody said to me, do you do cold showers? I was like, it's the one thing that's nice in my life. It's like the one fucking thing. That I'm watching like a movie on a Friday night. They were like the two things that kept me going. So you've got, you know, you've got these comforts in your life, but when you have too many of them, when life gets too easy, when you've got sex on demand, when you can travel anywhere you want, when you've got unlimited money, it's hard to be the same version of you. So how do you do that? You've got to keep continuously putting yourself in tough environments. And not only that, but it's good to be ready. You know, when I'm not sparring regularly or lifting heavy weights regularly, I don't feel as strong. I'm not sharp. I'm not as... If I don't do cardio, as in boxing, or maybe you do some sprints or whatever, my mind's not as sharp. I don't feel like the same me, you know? I think it's always good to be ready.
for anything. Like if I were to get in, the, if I were to go downstairs, I'm going boxing in about an hour. If I were to go downstairs now and some kid outside was like, I fucking hate you and your channel and tried to swing at me. Because I'm doing this so often, I'm sharp. I'm strong right now. I've got a good night's sleep in me. I've been eating well. I'm, I'm at my peak here. I'm at my peak. I can protect myself. I can defend myself. That's another big element of it too. You don't want to be like, you know, you walk down the street and somebody fucking clocks you and cleans you out and you just go, oh shit, if only I was, you know, I'm not, I'm not in good shape at the moment. You, you've got to stay ready for everything all the time, okay? That's a secondary point. But the main point is you've got to keep finding these tough things to do. You know, if you've got an office job, which I had in finance, so I was working in construction, which was tough. Then I got an office job. My grip was weaker. My hands were softer. You know, I'd, I'd get blisters if I went for a long walk because I was wearing like nice shiny loafers all day with the tassels on. And I'd see my friends that were builders and their handshakes were stronger than mine. And I was like, this, it, you lose something. But it's like you get paid more in finance. So then you go, okay, well, I have to find a way to do that. I have to find a way to challenge myself. You know, when people go and do like Tough Mudder or something like that, you know, or somebody trains for like an event or I don't know, um, like some of these YouTubers that train for boxing, whatever is good for them. It's so good for them. You know, you've always got to have an extra challenge. So if you find yourself in your life getting a little bit lazy, a little bit stagnant, or things have started to go well for you, make yourself uncomfortable again, challenge yourself, find something. It's what I do all the time. I don't really need to work anymore, okay? I've got businesses that make a lot of money. I could just let them operate in the background. I'm still pushing more than ever. I'm still investing more money than ever. How I've retained that mindset is by doing things like going to the gym six days a week and really butchering my body. You know, even when I do, you're already in shape. What you do, I'm gonna push myself harder. You know, I, I don't need to make myself sick. Oh, okay, I'm, but I'm gonna do it. Like those uncomfortable moments where you're like, oh, fuck, I remember this feeling. Like, why am I even doing this? Why am I doing hill sprints? I'm already in shape. People already buy my supplements. I don't need to look any better. It's like, yeah, but you know why. you got to stay fucking sharp. I'm going to throw up. It's like, i got to do another five because I said I was going to do 15 and I've only done 10. Don't be a lazy cunt. That will keep you going forever. And that will keep you striving to the next level and the next level and the next level. That is how you become a top 1% man. Because I don't regard a top 1% man as somebody who's earned top 1% money for one year or two years. I regard it as a guy that's got to the top, stayed there, keeps pushing, whatever, you know, remains at the top. Anybody can have a good year. How many guys have we seen get to the top, have a great year, start flashing the cash, and the next thing you know, they, they've got a 9 to 5 job. So I don't really see that as a sense of accomplishment. But for you guys out there, you've got to constantly find these masculine things that you can do on a weekly basis. It might be wrestling. It might be sparring. It might be lifting heavy weights. It might be, you know, going for a run at 5 a.m. once per week. And you fucking hate it, but you still do it every week. You know it's cold. It's winter now. You're like, I'm still going to go. 5 a.m. I'm going to go out there. When you don't need to, that is what I think pushes you to that kind of promised land where you can reach the absolute pinnacle of kind of male society or masculinity in general. Because once you couple that with the money, you know, you can hire coaches in all different areas. You can do more things. Do you see what I mean, guys? You can, you can pet, like, you can butcher your body and then go and get a massage, which you've paid for. And then you go again the next, so, you know, the mental's still strong, but the body could keep going. You can buy all the right foods and whatnot. You can have a chef that cooks you the best foods and you feel fucking fantastic. Do you see what I mean? So when you couple them together, it's when you get the best possible results. But my advice to you guys would be to always try and stay sharp by way of masculinity and mental toughness. As soon as, if life starts getting really good and you let those two slip away, number one, you're not the same man you used to be. And number two, you're going to start getting sloppy. Okay, you've got to stay sharp. Because my worst fucking nightmare is that I get really soft and I get used to a certain lifestyle and I'm having, you know, my chef cook caviar for me every single night and I start sipping on glasses of wine and I'm traveling so I don't have time to train and I stop boxing because I've got a beautiful missus and a couple of kids and I'm like, wow, well, I want to be at home with them and whatnot. And I'm just not feeling like the old me. My testosterone has dropped because I've stopped caring so much and whatnot. 
and I get lazy and I'm lying in bed for an extra two hours every morning with my beautiful missus. And then some guy in the street just goes, hey, first man, I hate your fucking videos. I think you're a cunt. Tries to fight me in front of my family and I've just not got it there. I don't feel like me. I feel weak. Somebody catches me slipping. I don't want that. I want to be permanently sharp at my best 24-7 all the time. Oh, what? You think because I'm, a, I'm not saying I am right now, but I will be in the future. What? You're saying because I'm a billionaire, I'm going to be soft. I will still kick the fuck out of you. How do you think I got to this situation, you stupid little cunt? Please, can I keep that mentality all the way throughout my life? I think that is so important, guys. And keeping your testosterone high is a, is a massive factor in that. But also constantly challenging yourself, putting yourself in uncomfortable positions, especially when you don't need to. But I think a massive one is something like sparring. And that is why I titled this video, or I might have changed it along the way, but it's definitely a big part of this video. This is why I think men should fight weekly. Okay, guys? 